Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Working to Walk team and Marilyn and Dr. Dale for helping me and guiding me to make a presentation and present in front of you. My overview of the presentation will be the introduction about Nepal, where does it lies in the map of world. Then after, what are the most common mechanisms of injuries? Then after, spinal cord injury and rehabilitation process, because the rehabilitation process which goes out here in European and states is totally different uh, than what we do. Uh, because we work on a basic component, and here I have seen most of the thing going in an advanced level. Then after, I'll be talking about barriers for not achieving maximum functional outcome, and then after summary of the presentation. This is Nepal, uh, which lies in between China and India. Uh, actually, Nepal is a sandwich country between China and India. Total population is about 27 million. Then after 70% of the land mass is hilly and uh, mountain areas, uh, where most of the people from Europe and other country are uh, visiting for the mountaineering. And uh, this is the country where Mount Everest lies, which is the highest peak in the world. Uh, then after 30 percent of the land mass is a plain. Uh, then after due to its geographical condition, the process of rehabilitation and the incidence of SCA is uh, quite complicated. Okay, incidence, uh, how it happens? Most of the injury, SCA injuries in Nepal, it happens due to fall from height. Uh, and then after uh, RT accounts a little less than that, then gunshot injury, physical assault, and compressed by mud or stone then after pathological condition for SCI. In this two picture, one you can see the animation and another one is the real picture where the people from village, mostly in countryside, they have to climb up the trees in order to get the feather in a daily basis. So most of the people who get injury from fall are from the countryside because this is their daily course and they have to continue it. So in the first picture, you can see cutting grass for daily course. Then after another one is honey hunter, uh, where people climb up the rocks in order to get the honey. And so during this process also, people might get injured or people get injured. Uh, this one is uh, falling from height while doing or making homes, constructing homes. And rest, you can see the carrying heavy loads in their head, axial load, sometime it might, uh, injure neck because of heavy load. In this picture, you can see different mode of transportation in RTA. So I'll be talking about rehabilitation process, how it goes uh, in my center. It's like we have uh, most of the team for rehabilitation. We have medical and nursing care, physical, occupational, vocational, and then after post Post and orthotic, peer counseling, social service, and CVR department, and then after clinical psychologist. Uh, this is the MDT component, what we are working in a standard level. And uh, most of the forms or other things we follow Asia, which is accepted worldwide. Okay, out of 1,000 cases, every year the incidents which we have recorded, which we have recorded, every year there are more than 1,000. Average case. So out of that 200, uh, 250 to 300 cases, they only go through the process of rehabilitation. Uh, then after average length of stay for quadriplegic, it's four to six months. Then after for paraplegic, it's three months. Uh, among that also, we have done a data analysis for the year, fiscal year, uh, where we have found average rehabilitation process days is 60 days for all the patients. Uh, but the duration of stay varies according to the severity of injury and condition of the patient. Okay, sorry to show the picture. <laughs> anyway, like I have to show the figure what actually happens out there because uh, we don't have such kind of health systems which works uh, properly as in other country. So most of the patient who comes for rehabilitation, they come up um, comes up with the pressure sore with the different grades. Uh, where in my center we manage up to third grade pressure sore, and after that we send it for plastic surgery to different plastic surgery hospitals. Okay, this is my department where I've been working. Uh, you can see some of my patient uh, where I've been doing the rehabilitation process. Uh, so the third picture, um, this patient, uh, uh, I got this patient once I uh, returned back last year 
he was waiting for me actually like uh, i was not there for 15 days and my colleagues my subordinates they told like uh, that I'm coming back and I treated him. Uh, later on, I'll show the picture. Actually, he's the case of gunshot injury. Uh, okay, uh, these are some of my patients in my department where I've been working with them. This picture, uh, this is the same patient who had a gunshot injury at the C6 level. Uh, now he's uh, independent enough, like he can walk independently. And this one is my first patient when I joined after my graduation. Even he is walking nowadays. Uh, this is the brightest picture what I have shown, like some people are walking. But there are a lot of conditions uh, where people won't be able to walk. Uh, so they will be having a lot of problem while propelling wheelchair, mostly with the cervical patients. Like last time I was here and I saw most of the high level injury cases they are using wheelchair and they are quite independent enough but in my country in my place where i do rehabilitation we do not have such a facilities of having uh, electric wheelchair or uh, power drive wheelchair so the process of uh, rehabilitation is really uh, difficult uh, for the high level patients uh, and these are the barriers why our patient do not meet a maximum functional outcome or the quality of life First of all, it is the economical status of the patient. Uh, not all patients are uh, good enough to pay for the rehabilitation process because rehabilitation process really goes long. And government support, we do not have uh, proper government support uh, which uh, aids uh, the people with SCI injury. Uh, till the date, they do not have a particular laws, uh, rules and regulations or health insurance system. So I talked about wheelchair, especially for quadriplegic patient. We do not have that one. And then in environmental accessibility, which I'll be talking later than after. Family support, lack of health facilities nearby. Because most of the person, like as I showed, like 70% of the patient, 70% uh, uh, of the people, they live in hilly areas. And we do not have a good health facility system in such areas. In order to get proper health facilities, they have to come to the capital city or nearby city, which is uh, well equipped. And sad to say, like, we do not have uh, such cities nearby so that patient can assess health system easily. And less number of rehabilitation specialists. Uh, actually, my center is the only one center which is called uh, the Center of Excellence for SCA patients. And we do not have more than two centers in Nepal which uh, helps in rehabilitating SCA patient. Okay, this one is the environmental accessibility. You can see the community, the homes are not uh, well modified. Like after SCA also, they are not well modified. This picture will explain properly, I guess. You can see the threshold in the door and the width of the door, which is not uh, sufficient enough to propel a wheelchair. And the steps, so these are the problems uh, which uh, our patient or uh, which uh, people with SCI in Nepal faces daily. And last year I was here and I saw a lot of, you know, like modification in the road where everyone can propel wheelchair. But that thing is not available in my country. Like uh, last two, three months back, we started with a project where two kilometer road will be modified so that every wheelchair user can use it. It's just the beginning. Let's see how far we can go. And this picture you can see like, uh, in order to get water, we do not have a proper modification, modified area. In order to work in the field also, we do not have particular uh, devices to work. Okay, action plan to overcome such challenges, what we are doing. Uh, we are doing uh, awareness program about SCI to the local communities and local school level, and local health uh, professionals. Then after establishment of satellite center, like last year, uh, just four, five months back, we have established one satellite center, uh, which is a branch of my center. Now then visiting community of the patient by MDT and process of reintegration is done. Like we all together, we team, visit the patient and we find out the problems, what they actually have suffering from and we try to reintegrate it. Um, then after networking with the local community uh, based worker, 
Uh, we do that. Then after referral to nearby hospitals and management of complications, uh, advocacy about disabled rights with the government. Because actually, we have started this process from last year uh, about uh, advocacy. OK, here you can see some of the pictures. First one is MDT visit to the home, what patient actually have. A second picture you can see tricycle. Uh, in the exhibition site also I saw that. And I'm happy that even in Nepal we do have, <laughs> besides having less resources. Uh, then after this one you can see vocational training we have done to the patient and they have, uh, they have been doing social reintegration in their community. Uh, this patient he's making candle for his daily living. And this one is about the awareness program, what we do to the local community and local school levels oh, about SCA. And main thing in Nepal, we get uh, secondary injury rather than primary injury during the process of transfer. So once we educate the local health community and local people, it will be easy so that patient won't get secondary injury. Thank you very much.